everything you thought you knew about Triceratops is wrong. For decades, we pictured them as sluggish, solitary giants wandering the prehistoric landscape alone. But groundbreaking discoveries from 2025 have shattered that image completely. Scientists analyzing specimens like Triceratops dreams and the dueling dinosaurs fossil have uncovered evidence that Triceratops could reach weights up to 12 tons, equivalent to a double-decker bus, and may have lived in protective groups. New fossil evidence even suggests they possessed quill-like structures along their backs. This is not just a minor update to our understanding, it's a complete rewrite of one of our most beloved dinosaurs. But the most puzzling question remains, how did these massive creatures actually work? The massive skull of Triceratops has puzzled scientists for decades. How could any creature support such an enormous weight without collapsing under its own mass? For over a century, Paleontologists assumed Triceratops moved slowly and awkwardly burdened by a skull that could reach up to 2.5 meters in length, about eight feet of solid bone and horn. The sheer physics seemed impossible. How does an animal carry something that massive on its head while still being able to walk, run, or defend itself? The Triceratops dream specimen revealed anatomical details that contradicted everything scientists thought they knew about ceratopsid movement. The few cervical vertebrae discovered in this nearly complete skeleton show bone density and muscle attachment points that indicate incredible strength. These are not the fragile neck bones of a struggling giant trying to keep its head up. Instead, they represent an engineering marvel that evolved over millions of years. These vertebrae formed a specialized support system called a syncervical that distributed the massive skull weight across the entire neck and shoulder region. The fusion created what amounts to a rigid framework with each vertebra working together as structural support. The bone texture reveals microscopic stress patterns that show how forces traveled through the neck, dispersing the load rather than concentrating it at weak points. Analysis of the muscle attachment sites reveals that Triceratops possessed proportionally massive neck muscles strategically positioned to maximize leverage while minimizing energy expenditure. The attachment scars on the bones tell us exactly where these powerful muscle groups connected, creating a network of biological support that could lift and maneuver that enormous head with precision. The postcranial skeleton shows adaptations for bearing enormous loads while maintaining mobility with compact feet and reinforced leg bones that could handle dynamic movement. The femur bones display internal architecture with thick cortical bone and reinforced joint surfaces. This biomechanical evidence suggests Triceratops could move with surprising agility despite weighing up to 12 tons. The living fortress concept emerges from this data. Triceratops was built like a mobile defensive platform combining massive protective capability with unexpected mobility, but individual armor and strength were only part of the survival equation in a world filled with equally massive predators. Recent discoveries near Newcastle, Wyoming have provided intriguing evidence that challenges traditional views of Triceratops behavior. Three Triceratops skeletons of varying ages, including a nearly complete adult and juveniles, were found together, suggesting these giants may not have lived the solitary lives scientists long assumed. While the exact nature of their relationship remains uncertain, the age distribution strongly indicates they were traveling as a group, possibly as a family unit. This finding has sparked renewed debate among paleontologists about Triceratops' social behavior. For decades, scientists pictured these massive herbivores as prehistoric rhinos wandering alone through late Cretaceous landscapes and meeting only during brief mating encounters. The Wyoming discovery suggests a more complex reality, though researchers remain cautious about drawing definitive conclusions from limited evidence. The largest specimen from this group bears unmistakable signs of Tyrannosaurus rex predation, including broken bones and distinctive puncture wounds from massive teeth. These attack patterns reveal the deadly encounters that shaped daily life for these herbivores. The presence of both adults and juveniles together 
raises questions about whether group living provided protective advantages against such formidable predators. Modern comparisons to elephant family structures offer potential insights, though such parallels remain speculative given the limited fossil evidence. If Triceratops did live in family groups, the benefits could have been substantial shared vigilance, cooperative defense, and protection of vulnerable young members. The positioning of individuals in the Wyoming find hints at possible defensive arrangements, though interpreting ancient behavior from fossil positions requires considerable caution. Trackway evidence from other Hell Creek sites shows parallel movement patterns that could support group migration theories. Multiple trackways display consistent spacing and directional alignment across considerable distances, suggesting coordinated movement. Whether these represent family groups, seasonal aggregations, or coincidental travel routes remains an open question. The implications of group behavior extend beyond immediate protection. Social structures could have enabled knowledge transfer about food sources, migration routes, and predator behavior across generations. Such advantages would have been crucial in an environment where survival meant more than just individual strength and armor. The fossil evidence suggests Triceratops faced threats that required every possible defensive strategy. The famous dueling dinosaurs fossil revealed a predator that completely changed our understanding of what Triceratops faced in their daily struggle for survival. For generations, the narrative was simple, massive Tyrannosaurus rex hunted massive Triceratops in epic one-on-one -on -one battles across the Hell Creek landscape. Scientists envisioned a straightforward ecosystem where two titans clashed in prehistoric duels that determined life and death on the late Cretaceous Plains. Analysis of the dueling dinosaur specimen revealed that the Tyrannosaur was not T-Rex at all, but something far more dangerous in different ways. The entangled skeletons from Montana's Hell Creek formation preserve a moment of direct combat between a Triceratops and what recent studies confirm as Nano Tyrannus lancensis, a fully grown adult of a distinct Tyrannosaur species. This predator was around 20 years old and physically mature when it died, proving it was not simply a juvenile T Rex as previously assumed. The specimen possessed proportionally larger forelimbs than even adult T Rex, along with more teeth fewer tail vertebrae and unique skull nerve patterns that developed early and remained fundamentally different throughout its life. Nanotyrannus emerges as a species built for speed and agility, representing an entirely different predatory approach than the brute force tactics of T-Rex. While T-Rex relied on crushing bite force and raw power, Nanotyrannus likely employed more precise hunting strategies. The bone damage patterns on Triceratops fossils now reveal two distinct predation signatures, the crushing bite marks of T-Rex and the precision strikes of Nanotyrannus. The dueling dinosaur specimen itself shows a Nanotyrannus tooth embedded within the Triceratops providing direct evidence of their predatory relationship. This dual threat environment suggests Triceratops may have evolved defensive strategies that could counter both brute force attacks and more agile predatory approaches. The horn and frill variations across Triceratops populations begin to make sense as possible adaptations to different predatory pressures in various regions. Comparisons between Triceratops species show distinct cranial differences with some populations developing proportionally shorter beaks and longer nasal horns. The Hell Creek ecosystem was an evolutionary arms race where Triceratops survival depended on versatile defenses against multiple sophisticated predatory strategies. This discovery rewrites decades of Tyrannosaur research that unknowingly mixed Nanotyrannus data with T-Rex studies. But the predatory threats were only part of what made these giants so formidable. Their physical appearance held secrets that would fundamentally change how we picture these ancient creatures. Recent integument analysis has revealed that our entire visual conception of Triceratops was fundamentally wrong. They were not the smooth-skinned giants we imagined. 
Museum displays and documentaries have portrayed Triceratops with elephant-like skin, smooth and gray, based on limited fossil evidence and assumptions about how large herbivores should appear. This reconstruction became so ingrained in popular culture that most people automatically envisioned Triceratops as a living rhinoceros, complete with a thick wrinkled hide stretched across their massive frame. Evidence from closely related Ceratopsian species suggests these creatures may have looked dramatically different than traditional reconstructions. Discoveries from Psittacosaurus reveal keratinous bristles along the tail, while Tianyulong displays long stiff quills across much of its body. These findings within the same dinosaur family raise intriguing possibilities that Triceratops might have possessed similar integumentary features that paleontologists had never considered. Direct skin impressions from Triceratops specimens show large scales with conical projections rather than smooth hide, along with polygonal basement scales preserved from frill specimens. These textures create a more rugged appearance than previously imagined. If Triceratops did possess quill, like structures similar to their relatives, they could have formed a mohawk-like ridge along the back and tail, making these animals appear even larger and more intimidating to potential threats. Such structures, if they existed, likely served multiple functions, including thermoregulation, social signaling, and enhanced visual intimidation during defensive displays. The emerging research into pigment preservation within dinosaur fossils offers future possibilities for understanding integument coloration. Studies on other dinosaurs have identified preserved melanosomes that reveal original colors, though such preservation has not yet been confirmed for Triceratops specifically. The possibility of more complex integument transforms our understanding of these animals from sluggish herbivores to formidable living fortresses. Combined with their massive size, potential social behavior, and defensive weaponry, these features suggest Triceratops ranked among Earth's most successfully adapted herbivores, the accumulating evidence paints a picture far more complex and impressive than scientists ever imagined possible. These discoveries fundamentally challenge decades of established paleontological understanding, though some interpretations remain under active investigation. The confirmed reclassification of Nano Tyrannus as a distinct species genuinely rewrites late Cretaceous predator dynamics while emerging evidence suggests Triceratops developed sophisticated survival strategies that allowed it to thrive in one of Earth's most dangerous ecosystems. Their combination of biomechanical engineering, possible social cooperation, and intimidating appearance may have created a defensive system that successfully countered multiple predatory threats for millions of years. These findings remind us that the fossil record still holds countless secrets, and our picture of prehistoric life continues to evolve with each remarkable discovery. The next time you see a Triceratops skeleton in a museum, remember that emerging evidence suggests you're looking at one of nature's most successful living fortresses.